brother and sister for giving me the opportunity to present this uh, the great Karma Master Sutra episode 24. Okay, um okay, I have split this episode into four scenes. The first scene is uh, heading Master Sutra is heading back to Mount Kentai, which he left for 10 years ago. Uh, there are three points here. Witnessed by Prince Jin, his concubine say to Master Tzu to fulfill my master wish is our mission. Often mention Master Tzu gratitude to the Buddha and Master Tzu always dedicating to the Buddha, to the Dhamma. So from this, um, from this, uh, I would like to connect it to the Dharma in COVID-19. Like Buddha hearts and Master Buddha heart as our heart and master mission as our mission. So our master chain urged us to sincerely to adopt vegetarian to end this uh, pandemic, global pandemic. And in the life wisdom on 26th of March, Master Chen also asked all of us to quickly repent to the heaven and to harbor gratitude to the mother nature. And despite the MCO that restricted our movement, great love doesn't cease and Suji continues on its effort to relieve suffering. We do provide DIY face shield cleaning up of Sungai Bolo hospital wards. So total three hours of cleaning with manpower of 60 volunteers compared to a week of uh, compared to a week of completion of the cleaning. And Suji also partnering with UNHCR to provide cash assistance to more than 5,000 refugees. And we believe more would, more would come. And I am grateful that my home brother is an uniform volunteer this year, that he could join the team in my community to do cash distribution, where, whereas myself assigned in the phone assessment as a team lead. Okay, do we remember SARS and MERS? There is also known as coronavirus. And I found it, I found this um, corona, this picture from the internet and shared by this sister Xiu Qing. Do you think this is true or it is just a coincidence? Some people will find it funny. In fact, I personally think this is a hint from the COVID-19 to all humans that it is time for us to change to veganism. And do we remember SARS and MERS? It is also known as coronavirus. SARS happened in November 2002. They caused death around 800 over caused death 812 out of 8,000 8, people infected. And MERS happened in year 2012. Death was around 800 out of 2,000 people get infected. To tell you the truth that I don't have any feeling for SARS and MERS outbreak during that time. Why? Because firstly, it doesn't affect Malaysia. And second, it is because I hardly follow global news. I started to concern and learn more about global news when I listened to Master Chen Yin live Xing Fa Xiang, watch live wisdom and attend volunteer, volunteer training. And in the re scientist research, three quarter of new infectious disease, diseases origin in animals. So outbreaks are becoming more common. Okay, this is a quote by Albert Einstein. A clever person solves the problem, a wise person avoids it. And in the statistic of by the World Health Organization, Estimate that the mortality rate of COVID-19 is 3.4%. While according to the Harvard School of Public Health, estimate that 
40% to 70% of the world population could be infected by COVID-19 within a year. If this estimate holds true, we are looking at around this 106 to 100, 186 million additional deaths this year. Before COVID-19, the world death rate was about 60 million each year. You see this figure, it is around two to three times of annual world death rate. And in year 2018, US established this GVP, means Global Virum Project. It is a 10 years collaborative scientific initiative to discover unknown zoonotic viral threat and to stop future pandemics. Estimated numbers undiscovered animal viruses capable of transmission to people is over 500,000 viruses. And what is this zoonotic disease? It is a disease that transmitted from animals to human. COVID-19 is a virus transmitted from animal to human. And now, we face this global disease we now we have one COVID-19 virus already caused so severe disaster in the worldwide and many countries are locked down to stay at home to prevent spreading of virus. Imagine if in the near future more viruses outbreak out of these 500,000 viruses, human will be gone. Actually, I learned this from one of our community volunteer who, who is a virologist. Um, indeed, Master Chen Yen already told us there is only one wondrous solution to end this COVID-19 that is to urge everyone to repent and adopt needless diet. And what is great repentance? It means all of us have to change our mindset and change in our action. In the Sutra, mentioned that Buddha Pure nature is no different compared to all sentient beings, including, air, including all animals. We must express our gratitude to Mother Nature, respect all life, and nurture great love to all life. Okay, come to the scene two. This is a conversation among three disciples of Master Zizhe when one of the disciples is sending medicine to Master Zizhe. So I highlighted three points here in their conversation. Master Zizhe had become weaker. However, he was also very diligent each day. Master Zizhe sees his time to work, leaving very little time to sleep. He has been expounding the sutra and writing the sutra books for months. Okay, and what is this Lotus Sutra all about? Master Chen Yen said, Lotus Sutra is a sutra to reveal the value of life, giving without any expectation, enduring all life obstacles, and this is also a living Bodhisattva path. Master says that she will uphold this Lotus Sutra life after life. So let us all have faith and confident in this wondrous teaching. In fact, Master Chen Yen took 45 years to pave this city road for all of us to walk the Lotus Sutra path. And why is this Lotus Sutra um, is a living Bodhisattva path? Lotus Sutra teach skillful means to reveal the true Dharma and true principles to different people based on their capability, either dull or sharp, to accept and apply in their daily life. Lotus Sutra also contains lots, lot, a lot of parables. Parables mean simple stories to illustrate moral and spiritual lessons. And I am grateful that every night before bedtime, myself, my home brother and my 10 years old girl, we will watch Master Cheyen tell a story. And we will also make wishes when we insert coins in the bamboo bank. Each of us select a 
things to aphorism to digest uh, and also reflects our to reflect the things aphorism. Lotta Sutra also relates to real life story and world issue. The thing that I love most in Suji journey is to is to be able to listen real life story shared by volunteers. Some stories are very touching and move me to tears so that we could remember it by heart and learn from their stories. From this real story, we can learn through Dharma. This is the reason why Master Chenyin say each of us is a sutra, because volunteers have changed and eliminated their bad habitual tendency to nurture good virtue and good habits. Such virtue can be carried to our next lifetime. And the third scene, Master Zizhe says the Buddha came to this world for one main reason. And let us reflect on this uh, scene three. The Buddha came to this world to help people understand that life is full of suffering and how to end the suffering. Where does suffering come from? From the bad karma people have created through threefold of karma, that is our body, speech, and our mind. If we sow bad karma, we will bear bad consequences. Due to people's collective bad karma, disaster reoccur around the world. I remember hearing from Thai Radio, Master mentioned that when she read the sutra during her early stage of cultivation, she couldn't believe that how could human beings contribute to severe disaster beyond our humanly control. Later on, Master realized that it is all about our tiny mouth that we would like to enjoy the pleasure of consuming meat with, and with our unwillingness to give up we continuously generate negative karma, negative collective karma over many lifetimes. Okay, let us view the law of karma or the law of universe in this severe global disease. The cause is COVID-19. The condition is in the meat market. And this COVID-19 has affected total 200 over countries out of 251 countries. And the consequences are some affected. Up to now, it is already 3.3 million people got infected. And some are not affected. We still need to continue to stay vigilant. And some have recovered and there are around 200, sorry, 234,000 deaths. And why is this so to the consequences? Let us see the next slide. This is the cartoon uh, drawn by Sister Su Ching. And Master says in the Wisdom at Dawn, 25th of April, Master says this COVID-19 is a vengeful spirit seeking host. Once this karmic door is open, vengeful spirits all seek revenge. It is like a lacunia patient looking for the right mesh of bone marrow. Master even says that to let animals live and die naturally. These are the karma of the animals and they should not be modified. Humans should not intervene to change their karma. Animals have their own world and in their bodies, they have their own germs. Likewise, with humans, we too have our own germs. So let us not create a condition for the animal germ to transmit to our human body. And what is this condition? Imagine there is no meat market and all the people around the world is already adopting meatless diet. Do you think that we will still have this COVID-19? Obviously, the answer is no. 
and we will have a clean environment free from virus outbreak and a peaceful world. Okay, come to the scene for enlightenment. Enlightenment. The key point is, Master Zizhe asks his disciple, which one of you can vow immediately to give your life in exchange for enlightenment and for delivering all living beings? At that point of time, no one dare to reply and muster up the cash Master up the courage to say, yes, I will do it. Actually, does this really mean that we need to sacrifice our life to reach enlightenment? Okay, let us see. In the Sutra of en Infinite Meaning, Chapter 1, Virtue. This is the Sutra verses. I pick up two. The first one is, they are able to give up all that is hard to give up, such as wealth, wife, children and kingdom and we relate it back to the COVID-19. We understand that uh, some of the medical frontliner because of the they would like to save the life of the patient and they have they have sacrificed and they got infected and even freeze. Okay another example would be Siji Mission volunteers and and, uh, and also stop pursuing valve. For example, I can think of, of this uh, KL and Selengo, Malaysia CEO, our sister Echo Chen and brother David Lee. They have decided to stop pursuing the bell, donating a land to build Jing Su Hall in Malacca. And also they became the devoted full-time city mission volunteers. And another Sutra versus is never begrudging anything internal or external, their head, eyes, bone marrow, and brain were all given out to others. This is related to our city silent mental and also organ donation and bone marrow bank. And what is this silent mental? We can still cultivate our blessing even after our last breath by donating our physical body for a medical training and research. Master advised us not to forget, never forget and always remember that year, that person and that event. I would like to share with you all that in the year 2015, it was my first time I watched the silent mental prayer ceremony in the Thai TV. I can still remember that moment because I was so touched and I cried non-stop. And at that point of time, I wished to be silent mentor and I wished to walk this Bodhisattva path till, our, till my last breath. I will always remember this moment as it is my initial inspiration, also known as the body mind. Okay, another, if, another thing that I will never forget is this book entitled Master Chenyan Love and Mercy. It's, it is also happened in year 2015. I was crying nonstop till I have to breathe using my mouth, meaning my nose already. <laughs> and when I read this part with a story of a one caring recipient, there is page 41. This Caribbean says, having a deformed body is not real suffering. The real suffering is being deformed in mind and character. Most of the disaster and calamities in this world are created by people who have complete body and limbs, but incomplete mind and spirit. I am not crippled when compared to the true cripple of this world. When I read this part, I can understand that Buddha, Buddha teaching is so, rebel, so relevant to our daily life. We must have formed a very good affinity with Buddha in our past life. That is why we have this precious affinity to learn true Dharma with our Master Chen Yen this lifetime. If we didn't seize opportunity, diligently learn, contemplate, 
and most importantly, apply the true Dharma in this lifetime, there is no guarantee that we may meet each other in our next lifetime in this city world. Okay, when it comes to achieve self-enlightenment by upholding precept, samadhi, and wisdom, and through helping others, we achieve enlightenment. Dharma can be very deep and profound, but at the same time, it can also be very simple, that is, love and giving. Let us see the state of samadhi means. All things are constantly moving around us, and if our mind is still, tranquil, and be focused on the things that we are doing, we may able to... Samadhi also means that we achieve connection between mind and dharma in our daily life. Constantly reflecting and contemplating why and how things are happening. Everything that happens in the world can be connected to dharma. Samadhi also means we have a peaceful mind, content, not seeking fame and wealth, free from desire. Samadhi also means that delusion and discursive thought cannot enter our mind. Here, we are familiar with these six parameters or six professions. I remember very clearly that Master Chenya mentioned before this, when we practice the first four precepts, as the first four parameter that is giving, precept, enduring, and diligent, and ultimately we will reach the samadhi state and we will gain wisdom. Here I would like to share my personal experience during my profession in Jian, Jianji during year 2016. I remember clearly that I joined my home brother to deliver computer to Suji care recipient children. And when we departed from our home, both of us were in dispute. I cannot recall exactly for what reason, but most probably it's because of certain words that I didn't like to hear from him. You see, ordinary people and ordinary being can be such afflicted by just a simple act. So, at the time, we were unhappy due to the argument and we were thinking, we were thinking that whether we should postpone the computer delivery. However, appointment had fixed with the care recipient. Eventually, we both calm our mind and focus on delivering the computer. When we both witnessed the happiness of the children when they receive the computer, both of our hearts filled with Dharma joy. And we apologize to each other. In fact, when I share this thought, I, when I share this uh, in event incident with my home brother, he said that he couldn't remember this incident. <laughs> but I can still remember it clearly. And during the uh, session, my home brother delivered a computer, do the setting up for the care recipient children. Uh, I will interact with the care recipient parents and uh, about the climate change and promote vegetarian to them. Okay, let us move on to the five types of eye. The first eye is physical eye. It is given by our parents. Heavenly eye need not travel around, yet one could know the worldly news. Dharma eye is knowing the cause, condition, consequences and effect. Using Dharma eye to see what kind of retribution that sentient being face. It's like a pollution. Dharma eye, we can see the air pollution, soil erosion, lots of disaster, cause so much suffering. And what kind of environment we are living now? It also leads to climate change. The Amazon rainforest wildfire lost equivalent of 8.4 million soccer field this decade. Okay, let us move on to the fourth eye, which is wisdom eye. To discern and understand that everything is back to emptiness, not to be calculative, 
attached, no fighting for power, name, status that cause much karma, see through all principles, and Buddha eye, and compass the four types of eye. Buddha has understand all, all knowing. If we could really be more mindful, closer to our pure nature, we could achieve these five eyes. Okay. Let us see the water crisis, the evil, poor transpiration and the water cycle. In fact, when the Amazon rainforest happened that time, our master Chenyin worried about the water crisis. And why is it so? Mountain too have their plant and forest. When there is a rain, they will absorb the water from its leaf to the root. The root will then protect the land, ensuring it retains sufficient water. The excess water will flow through the surface of our land. I have done the research here and one large oak tree can transpire 40,000 gallons. It is equivalent to 151,000 liters per year. And the last tree in a single day can soak up about 100 gallons of water out of the ground. Imagine if we have cut down all the, all the trees, we will face water crisis one day. And we also face wildlife crisis. The loss of plant and animal species will be the key topic of this discussion and has been highlighted as a bigger risk to our planet than infectious diseases and terror attacks. Last year, the UN revealed that one million of the planet, eight million species, were threatened with extinction. Let us see the Earth Overshoot Day. This Earth Overshoot Day marks the date when humanity annual demand on nature exit that, that exit what Earth ecosystem can regenerate in that year. And we can see this 1.75 Earth. This means that humanity is currently using nature 1.75 times faster than our planet ecosystem can regenerate. And, and in, the, in the world right now, and there are a lot of people, they are, they are aware about this climate change and they are fighting for they are fighting to protect the Mother Earth too. I remember when I first joined Siji as a great shirt, I heard Master Cheyen say that all these years she never urged her disciple to adopt vegetarian diet because she knows that human beings are very difficult to change their eating diet. But it is because of SARS outbreak, Master started to urge all her disciples to be vegetarian. Let us have faith of the faith is the source of all merits. We must have faith in meatless diet as the sign of true repentance. Okay, in the year 2012, going vegan would have huge health benefit. Bill Gates says will have a huge health benefit and be a sustainable choice for the planet. His investment into vegan-based company Beyond Meat. In the year 2013, he says that there is no way to produce enough meat for 9 billion people by year 2050. And in the year 2015, Bill Gates says the next virus outbreak, we are not ready. And it is true and it is happening now in end of 2019, that is COVID-19. Okay, this Rita Tumble, she is a school girl climate change warrior. In a recent interview, Rita explained that she persuaded her parents to go vegan by stress, 
by stressing that their, refu their refusal to make the easy switch was stealing her generation future. And now her dad is now fully vegan, while her mom is 90% of the way there. And just now we have seen Master Chen Yen, Bill Gates, and this Rita Tambo. Do you think what kind of Buddha, what kind of eye that they have? If the world has seen a scary future with the emergence of COVID-19, the future of our planet in a three to four degree Celsius scenario will take us to an entire different level of uncertainty, including in terms of health. So together, we can do it. Change our eating diet, start from each of us. Working together to mitigate disaster. The Buddha taught us not to be superstitious. The law of cause and effect is very scientific. Only if all of us can act to benefit the world and all sentient beings will be, will we have enough strength to overturn all the calamities and disaster happening. Cảm ơn for listening to my sharing. Thank you. Okay, uh, Sister Tammy, that was, uh, that was very well done. I didn't know that you could outdo yourself, <laughs> but uh, you did it again. It, it was very wonderful. It was very informative, uh, both on the Dharma and also on the facts, um, including the, uh, some of the scientific and also the worldly affairs. Uh, you were also very spot on and connecting that to the, the Zizhe series, um, the Master Zizhe, and also connecting to the Dharma. Um, yeah, it's, it's um, you, you've outdone yourself. So, so a couple of things that I found very interesting, uh, not so much uh, not so much a feedback because I don't think this requires feedback. It's, it's more of something that I found interesting in your sharing. So, um, uh, first of all, congratulations on finally getting your um, husband, home brother, to become the uniform volunteer this year. And uh, yes. hopefully, hopefully he will remember this time, not like last time where he doesn't remember the things that happened before. But oh, yeah. <laughs> that he will remember that this is the year where um, every bit of help is needed because of the coronavirus, right? So every bit of help is needed. And, and I think uh, you mentioned about what is great repentance. I think I really, really like that. I really like what you mentioned. The great repentance is when you have the mindset that changes, a changing mindset plus in changing action. Um, rather, than, rather than changing action, I think I like to say changing behavior. Um, you know, it's, it's, the, idea is that, um, the idea is that we're in this together and uh, we need to try to, first is to understand, right? Master talks about having that consensus and then go, building the consensus to work toward a collective action. And I think that most people know what is going on, right? They just don't want to see it. They just don't want to, they just ra rather turning a blind eye because it's so easy. It's much easier to turn a blind eye. And Sister Tammy, just like you said, before you really start reading and looking into Tsuji, you didn't really care much about the world news, right? So you talk about MERS, you talk about SARS. It's not really, it's happening, but it's not a reality to you, right? So that's the idea. The, the first step toward great repentance is to accept, to understand, right? It's, it's to see that it's indeed happening and to see that it's really occurring. It might not affect you. It might not be real because it's not happening. It's not happening to anyone around you but it's really there, right? The first thing is to see it. And the second thing is, well, what do you do about it, right? So, so I think you mentioned that something that's a very big transformation, right? At first, and you admit it, that that's the first step in repenting. Also, Master said, when you repent, you need to disclose it to everybody, right? So you disclose it and you said, back then I didn't know about SARS. I knew it happened, but I didn't really care for it. And so was MERS because it didn't really happen to us. And I think that's very real. It's, it's happening to people now, but it's a very, very different world now because 
the pandemic is now everywhere, right? It's not just SARS where it's only happening to Asia, but it's actually everywhere now. So it's, it's a, that's why master said it's a great opportunity for education to, to, to educate people because before you talk about SARS, you know, half, more than half the world would still be asleep because they don't care. So you can talk about all you want about SARS and people would still not feel about it, right? But rather now it's very different. Now everybody, their lives are mm. all affected one way or the other, right? Whether you're in lockdown or you're in the restrictive, restrictive closure or whatever control or whatever, you know that your life has been affected. And even if your life is not directly affected, somehow indirectly, right? People may be losing work. Maybe the finance world is not going so well. Maybe the economy is not doing well. You are somehow going to be affected. And that's what it is. This is a very real thing. So, so thank you for pointing that out. Great repentance is a changing of mindset plus a change in action. Only when you have the change in action would it really bring about true manifestation of changing mindset. And if you're only changing your mindset, but you didn't change anything in your doing, in master's eyes, it's not quite the same. You can talk all you want about how really you feel about the importance. But if you don't change your behavior, then sorry, it's not there yet. Okay. So, so that's something that, that, that I want to bring out in your, in your scene one. And scene number two, Master Zizhe became weaker, but still even more diligent each day, leaving very little time to sleep. And I think this is a very important point where um, you, you can almost draw a parallel to Master right now. And even just mm -hmm. today, there was another um, uh, online, um, online sharing with uh, brothers and sisters from Singapore. And Master also said at the end um, that she was uh, dragging her life just to make, to make it to the morning Dharma talk every day, okay? That's what she was doing, dragging her life. It's not dragging her feet. It's dragging her life just to complete it. But she made the vow. She said to herself, she said to us, she said that, um, Master said today that she predict, she sort of know that she's not going to be able to finish the um, Lotus Sutra. But it is her vow that she will carry it on until the last breath. That is what she's doing. So you can imagine that that's exactly what she's doing. At this moment, Master felt even more stronger will and stronger need to continue to, 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 to preach and to, to have the morning Dharma talk. And I think that's something that uh, we need to see the parallel too. And when Master Zizhe calls on to, her, to his disciples, you know, what happened to the disciples? You know, who would give their lives, right? You mentioned about that. And, and, and what, 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 what did they say? Not many people wanted, and that's the problem, right? So Master Zizhe, I think um, uh, his life ended, I think, was when he was still young, I think about 60 or something. So, so it's... it's Remember this story, right? Remember these stories because uh, when Master came to call on her disciples, where would we be? Would we be the silent ones? Would we be the ones that's in action? Or would we just say that, yes, we understand, but we haven't taken any action? I think that that's all very important, okay? So, so that's where we talk about uh, scene number two and scene number three. You mentioned about um, the whole entire karma, the cause and the condition and the consequences and the collective karma, I think that was very well put. I think it's, it's just exactly reflective what Master talks about today. I think Master, in morning talk today, morning Dhamma talk, uh, she mentioned, Master mentioned many things about the, the story of, 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 uh, of, of the Buddha before he was enlightened, when he was a prince. He was talking about the contemplation, which you'll talk about later, um, to understand the, the suffering in the world. And so Buddha came to the world to help people understand that life is suffering. And I think it's very, very important is that it's not so much to help people understand life is suffering. It's, it's more like in, in, in steps, right? First thing is you see the suffering and then you know where it comes from. And then you know, and then you are inspired to try to end it. And then I'll teach you how. So that's what the Four Noble Truths are. And, and I think that's what Master is trying to do, except, except we are still stuck at the first step, which is, do we truly open our eyes to see that this is suffering? And, and I think that this is very, it's a very, uh, very difficult. Um, so in scene number four, uh, you mentioned that precise statement. Um, how many, Master Zizhe was talking to his disciple, how many of you would give your life in exchange for enlightenment? 
and and I and I really like it that you mentioned what does that mean to give your life, and then you you drew the parallel to the sutra of infinite meanings where you have to give everything that's hard to give, and I think that is so important that um, it's not just about giving; it's about letting go, right? It, it, giving sort of it's sort of like, you know, I'm giving this to you. But letting go means I am not holding on to it anymore. You know, whether it's giving it to somebody or somebody wants it or not, but I'm not holding on to it. You know, and, and I think that's the hardest part. The hardest part isn't about giving your body, right? If, if Master asks you right now, who would be willing to give your life for the enlightenment, right? I think many people would say yes, but I think, I, I think that's because we don't really know what it means to give for enlightenment. Uh, we, we, we quite, right, we, we quite not sure what it means. It means that what is the favorite thing that you want? Let it go. Are you willing to? And put that and multiply that by a hundred. Are you willing to, right? So if you think that going to bed at a certain time, waking up at a certain time, time or having a very comfortable sleep at a certain time or having a very good teacher who cares for you and and all of that that's important well fine let it go now your teacher is very mean your teacher just treats you very badly and all of that are you willing to let go of that belief how the world is supposed to work are you willing to let go of that that's the hardest part you are holding on to what we think right now the world works and functions in a scientific way. Are you willing to let that go? And that's the hardest thing, right? We're holding on to it. Like we're holding on to it like it's our dear life, right? We're holding on to something that we believe in, right? But are you willing to let that go so that you can reach enlightenment? And if you ask further, maybe we are not so sure anymore. So I think the students the disciples didn't want to answer because they're not so sure if they're willing to do so. However, for Tsuji volunteers, it's very different because we don't, we don't really quite know what's there to not let go. So we just say, yes, we'll do it without really knowing what we're not letting go. So, so I think we're, we're, we're very passionate. And then we, get, we, we got on and then we go like, oh my goodness, I didn't realize that that's what I had to let go, but I'm already on this. So let me just go, uh, go ahead with it. So, so I think sometimes... Um, cultivation requires a little bit of, of purity, you know, something so simple. That's what Master talks about today, right? The thought that are very pure. So simple and so pure. Um, Master, you said that we had to let go to give your life to, to get enlightened. Isn't getting enlightened our goal? And if it is, then, I, then I'm willing to. It's a very simple thing, not going too much into what am I supposed to give up and what can I hold on to? Not so much anymore. So, so anyway, this is going a little bit deeper into the, the more, the more um, theoretical um, uh, discussion, which, which is something that Master doesn't want us to right? like, what are you giving up? You know, you're giving up your ideal, you're giving up your, your, your freedom. You know, that's not something that we should get into. It's just something that I, that I think about. Um, okay, so next thing about, uh, that, I really, that I really like was what you mentioned about samadhi. And I think that is wonderful. You know, you put, you put samadhi in the middle and then you were mentioning that it's a connection between the mind and dharma in life. I love that. I think that, um, I think when, you, when your mind and dharma connects together, um, there's all sorts of wonderful things that happen. But usually during the day or during any moment, it's really hard to have the mind and the dharma connected together. So when you see certain things, you see the, the the good thing or the bad thing of it, you don't see the Dharma side of it. You just see the happy side and you see the not so happy side, but you don't see the Dharma side of it. And, and I think that Samadhi is really, it's a state of mind where you are willing and able to see the Dharma side of it. So something that good that happens, you're not just overjoyed because you see the Dharma side of it. Something that really bad happens, you are not very saddened by it or angered by it because you see the Dharma side of it. And I think tranquility or samadhi is a state of mind or the practice to be able to see the Dharma side of it. So, Brother Joe, what is the Dharma side of it? Well, that's for us to figure out, right? That's for us to understand what it is. But for everything there is, you know, if we are not in a rush, then we'll always be able to contemplate and say, hey, the book is here. 
Where does the book come from? Why is it here? You know, this is something that, once again, it's, it's getting into very philosophical, but um, it's something that, that I really enjoy. It's in mind and Dhamma together. And, and to be able to have that um, samadhi means that in that state of mind where you see everything and the Dhamma is always connected to it. You know, you see something and you see the Four Noble Truth. You see something and then you see the, the, the vows. You see something and then you see something and then you realize how this is connected to master, how this is connected to what we're doing in the Dharma lineage and how this is doing in the, in, in the uh, Siji path. I think that's all what it is, connection, you know, connecting everything together. You see people and then you realize what, the, what master teach you in, in terms of people interaction. You see something and then you see something being wasted. You right, right away think about what master taught us about these things. That's what it means to, to be connected to the teachings, you know, not just connecting to desire or connecting to people, but it's connecting to the teachings. Okay. So lastly, lastly, I, I really love, I mean, when the moment that you mentioned about Bill Gates, right, you mentioned Bill mm -hmm. Gates. And then I was asking myself this question. I was telling myself that I'm going to ask this question later, which you did ask. Uh, you, I was asking myself, so which eye did they have to see all these things, right? And then you went, you go into Greta, and then you ask a question, well, which eye did they have to, to see all these things? That's wonderful. That's mixing together. You know, this, I, I love that. This is so, I enjoy this so much because that's what I do, right? I see something, and then I thought about, mm, Master talks about the five eyes. So which eye did, so which eye did I not these eyes you know you begin to ask these questions and that's when dharma really becomes practical and it really becomes fun because it's really you right it's not just like i have two eyes and i don't know which one they are or i don't know how to get there right so so you mentioned the five eyes and it's wonderful right the first thing is the physical eye which i think we all sort of sort of uh, can begin to understand what it is even though there are people that don't have them but most of us, we sort of do have them and we understand that, right? So, and then we go on to the heavenly eye, which you mentioned is to be able to understand all the things that happens. I think that's, that's very first step, right? Master introduced us to the world, like, like what, you, what happened to you. Um, before you didn't know SARS, before you didn't know MERS, or you didn't care. Now this eye isn't just the ability to see it because I think we all have the ability to see it, right? We all have the eyes, but if it's closed, you can't see it. So the idea is that the heavenly eye isn't just the eye to see it, but they have to be willing to use it, okay? So you have all the world news around you back in 2003, but you didn't care for it because it didn't really matter, right? So even if you had the eyes to see so far away, if you don't open it, it's not going to work. Even if you have the heavenly eye capability, you're not using it, that means you might as well not have them, okay? So that's the second part, the heavenly eye, right? And then you move on to the third part, which is the Dharma, and then the wisdom, and the Buddha. I think there's a very um, subtle part, subtle differences between each part of the eye, right? So heavenly is something that you can see all the things that happens, okay? And, and, and sometimes people say that you could see past, present, and future, depending on, depending on, depending on the, uh, the, the explanation. But I, 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 you know, we have to find the explanation that fits our understanding and fits some sort of logic, right? Because remember, all these criteria and classification are done by disciples afterwards. They are really done by the disciples afterwards to try to say, which is which? You know, they're trying to figure out because they're like us, right? They're sort of confused, right? So what are the differences between the five eyes? And which eye is supposed to come before which? People get confused too, right? So they put their classification and categorization to try to understand what these are so they can explain to people. And so, so when it comes to heavenly eye, it's sort of more understanding just to know, right? But Dharma eye is to be able to know the, 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 the causes, the causes. They're able to see the past and the future because you see the cause and the consequences. So, so the Dharma is in it but you only see the manifestation. The law is not there. You don't see it yet, but you see the effects, the consequences of the law. You see the past because you know what they are right now. So you see, you understand where the past was. You see what they're doing now. So then you know where they will be. And that's the Dharma eye, right? Because you see the, the entire spectrum. 
And then the wisdom. I think this is the part where I found to be the most exciting, which is what is the eye of wisdom? Master talks about wisdom being um, the ability to be to finding that all living, all living being, all sentient beings are equal. So what does that mean? And to me, it means that the wisdom is to see everything is equal. But then you tell me, how can they be equal when they're so different, right? You're talking about born in, in, in the animal realm, right? A dog, a cat is obviously very, very different from a human being. So how can you, with which eye do you see the dog and a cat similar and the same as a human being? Which eye is that, right? And, and to me, it's, an, it's not which eye, it's the wisdom. What does that mean? It means that before the eye of the principles, all living beings are equal. What does that mean? It means non-sentient beings, no sentient beings can, es can escape out of this principle, right? The dogs are born into this life as an animal realm because there were some, there were some causes. And this is the consequence, right? You are born as a human realm because in the past you did something and now there's a consequence. So even though you right now, is very, you are very different from a dog, but before the principles, you're all equal because you put the cause, you put the condition, and you get the consequence. That's what happened to the dog and that's what happened to you. So it's all the same. And I think that's when you go above and say, everything's the same. I am a human and that's a dog. We are the same because no one escaped from this principle. This principle applied to all of us just the same. It doesn't discriminate. It doesn't say that, oh, you are this and you are that. Therefore, the law doesn't apply to you. No, the law applies to everybody just the same. And I think that's the... the to see that I am no better than this dog because they are only paying for the consequences. If I do the same thing and I will be paying for the consequences one of these lifetimes too, I will become a dog just the same. So respect that, respect that. Then you begin to realize that everything is the same. Then you begin to realize and you respect the principle and you respect the laws of nature. Okay, and then finally, that's the Dharma eye. So, so I think really, really enjoy your sharing today. I took a lot of time to you know, write down all the things that I really enjoy. Thank you, Sister Tammy. It's really, really wonderful. I really appreciate you taking the time out to, to do all these. And, and I love all the connections you put in. And then that's really good. You know, I wasn't thinking about the Sutra of Infinite Meanings and then you pull it right in, right? And then I wasn't thinking about the five eyes. I mean, we talked about that back in, uh, back in the, uh, the merits of the Dharma teachers. Uh, I think it was 16 uh, the, the, or, or something. And, and uh, no, it wasn't 16. So it's 17 or something. And, and, or 18. I'm, I'm mixing up all the numbers. But I wasn't thinking about that, and you pull that right in. And then you're talking about all the current events. You're talking about the people and the events that we know. That is wonderful. So thank you so much. This is a wonderful night to share all these wonderful stories. Thank you, Sister Tammy. I give you the two thumbs up. Um, come on. Truly, yeah, reading from the chats, uh, we all of us enjoy today's session so much. Ganon, Brother Joe, Ganon, Sister Tammy, superb. Okay, uh, <laughs> Sister Tammy, any words from you? Hello. Hello. <laughs> okay, our uh, brothers and sisters, uh, any questions uh, or insights for the day before we call it? Uh, Question. Okay. I'm sure everyone had a very wonderful. Oh, 真的是 today, 真的是, wow, we all feel so much. Yes, always until no question to ask. <laughs> wow, <we're tired. laughs> okay, tomorrow there will be another session. So let us uh, continue our day uh, tomorrow morning, Shin Pa Siang, and uh, followed by this 7 o'clock. Tomorrow we'll have a very good sharing by our Cici uh, US sisters. Today, this Dhamma Master, since uh, everyone is aware, right, it's the last uh, episode. This uh, Dhamma Master, we will wrap up. So, another Friday, we will, next Friday, we will have sharing by Brother Chin. Uh, Brother Chin is on board today, so we look forward. It will be uh, for this, uh, the first realization and there's a trial of eight realization. So, we look forward. Okay, everyone, uh, if anyone has any questions, 
OK, Elsa, can I we'll wrap up? Can I Sister Tammy, can I Brother Joe for lots of heartfelt and wisdom sharing. Oh, all of us benefited so much. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for your presence. Hope that each of us could sustain the Dharma joy and take in another piece of uh, our Hualien teachers' love to our life. Let us please make three bows to the Buddha and Dharma Master as we depart to apply these teachings in our daily life. Let us pay our respects to our teachers of life, universal truth. Arms together. First bow. Second bow. Third bow. Can everyone see everyone tomorrow morning? Can Hello. Okay, Can. Okay, good night. Good night, everybody.